Hello everyone, my name is Cameron. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're finally doing Super Showdown predictions. It's what Wednesday today. Um, yeah, it's Wednesday today. This is probably gonna go up tomorrow. Uh, so you guys will be seeing this on Thursday. Uh, sadly, you will not be seeing the review till like Monday-ish uh, for a few reasons. One, Super Showdown airs at 5 a.m. my time, which is Eastern. Um, so I won't be awake when it starts. I won't be awake to watch it at all. Um, I won't even be home to watch it when I wake up. Uh, I'll probably wake up around four and a half hours after it's done uh, and then start getting ready for work. I work at 11 on Saturday, so I don't even have time to watch a little bit of it before I leave. It's literally I'm going to be waking up, getting ready, and then leaving for work. When I get home, I'm going to be dead ass tired after an 11 hour shift, so... I'm not gonna watch it when I get home on Saturday, uh, and I work another seven hour shift on Sunday. So, I will most likely be watching it Sunday night, which will probably mean Jesse's gonna be watching it with me. Um, and then you guys will get the review Monday morning. Uh, but, that being said, I am actually really excited for this. There's a few matches that actually have kind of my interest peaked. There's a few that I'm just kind of like, okay, this is kind of, you know, I don't think this match should be on this, whatever, who cares. <laughs> like with um, the Greatest Royal Rumble and like with, I'm, I'm going to guess, Crown Jewel in a few months, or in a month, it's going to be much like a, a glorified house show where it's going to be matches that are kind of designed to try to cheer, to try to get the fans happy and try to get them, you know, cheering and stuff. And it's not going to really be anything that matters too significantly. Like, if you go back to the Greatest Royal Rumble, there were no title changes, which typically is what happens at a house show. There were no title changes. Everything was kind of, you know, the, the matches were all kind of, you know, designed in unique ways to make it more fun for the fans. Um, for instance, the, cru <coughs> the Cruiserweight Championship match there, there was a lot of Spanish flies. There was a lot of, like, big-time moves that were, that you, like, yeah, you see those in the Cruiserweight division, but they don't overdo them. And they, they did a lot of big moves in that match. And so you can kind of see that, okay, this is probably going to be more of the same. Which is a bit disappointing when you look at it. Because there's actually really good matches on here. Um, and I'll point out which matches I'm actually excited for. Which matches are like, eh, who cares. And which matches I think can actually, you know, be a viable thing to put on this. So, without further ado, let's get into the predictions. Without, let's, let's get away from me being a cynical wrestling fan. Let's just get on to it. Uh, first match... For the prediction, we have The Undertaker versus Triple H in a men's singles match. Uh, I have The Undertaker predicted. There's a lot of people... A lot of people debating this one a lot. This is probably the most heavily debated match on this card, to be honest. Um, and while, honestly, I think neither of them should be on a show right now. You know, they shouldn't... <clears throat> they shouldn't be on, like, you know... They probably both shouldn't be wrestling. They're probably both past their prime... I think we've seen a lot more fun stuff and a lot better matches recently from Triple H, but I also think that it's just, it's Undertaker winning this. Come on. It's, it's the Undertaker. I don't think that, I don't think they should really be putting, you know, him into this situation where it's like, okay, it's the Undertaker versus Triple H. I think they should have kept this feud dead and buried. No offense to the feud and no offense to the wrestlers or anyone taking part in this. But the the end of an era match a few years ago at WrestleMania, God, a few years ago, it's like 10 years ago at this point. Um, but the end of an era match at WrestleMania was really good. It was a fantastic match. The match before that year was also fantastic. But it should have stayed there. Pulling this match back, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be cynical here, but pulling it back and having them fight now is going to take a lot of the the moments we loved from that match. It's going to take a lot of the story from that match, especially the end of the match, and it's going to kind of just wipe it away. You know, because they walked off together. Sean, Undertaker, and Triple H all walked up the ramp together. You know, it was a very era-defining moment, and it was definitely what could have been their last thing together, or ever, for all three of them, and it would have been the perfect way to end it. Now, obviously, it wasn't the end for The Undertaker or even Triple H. Um, but, I think they should have just left it there. 
I don't think they should have pulled it back for Triple H and Undertaker. I don't think they should have brought it back for this. If it was on Mania, I can maybe see it. You know, if they had a big Mania thing, maybe. But a, ho- a show like this, I just feel like it's kind of a waste of it. You know, especially especially since this is going to be leading to something at Crown Jewel, most likely, which is what the rumor is. Um, but, like, I just... I, I can't see the reasoning for this match being on here. And I, I don't want to be mean about it, because I do love watching Triple H and The Undertaker wrestle, but it's like... Do we really need this again, you know, when the last one was so great? Um, the Undertaker will have Kane in his corner, and Triple H will have Shawn Michaels in his corner. Um, apparently there's like... A, I haven't even finished her all, but apparently there's like a beatdown. Uh, the Undertaker and Triple... Or the Undertaker and Kane beat down Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Uh, and this is apparently setting up for a tag team match between DX and the Brothers of Destruction at Crown Jewel, which is the rumor right now. And then Shawn Michaels is supposed to have something at Survivor Series from what I've heard. Which kind of also, you know, it's kind of WWE going, okay, the one guy who actually stayed retired since he actually lost his retiring match, his last final, his final match, is now coming back. Like, seriously? You're bringing Sean back to wrestle? Like, I get it, Sean wants to wrestle, and I also get that this could lead to AJ Styles versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, which, let's be honest, we're all very excited for that match. But... I also don't want him back. Again, it's a, a thing of I love the way it ended so well. You know, it, it wrapped up very nicely with his career, and I think they should have. I, I think they shouldn't bring him out of retirement. But if he wants to do it, let him do it. You know, I I, I won't. I'm not going to judge it because you know it could lead to something fantastic. But I also kind of think it's a little bit of a waste of time. I've talked for like four minutes on one match. I'm sorry, I went on a long tangent there. But the Undertaker is my prediction in the Undertaker Triple H match. Next, men's tag team match, John Cena and Bobby Lashley for some fucking reason versus Kevin Owens and Elias. Cena and Lashley. This is another match that makes no fucking sense to me. Why is John Cena randomly thrown into this? You know, have it be Bobby Lashley and... Fuck, I don't know. Somebody else that would make sense in this this situation. You know, Bobby Lashley and someone that could also... You know, I get John Cena's feuded with Kevin Owens and he's done stuff, you know, he's, he's slow, slightly feuded with Elias in the past, but it's like, it's so out of left field to put him and Bobby Lashley together. It's, it's a tag team that makes no sense. Um, and it's kind of just like, okay, so Kevin Owens and Elias are getting buried on, on Saturday. All right. Well, you know, it happens. I think this is a pointless match. Um, I would have much rather like to see Kevin Owens and Elias versus Bobby Lashley in a handicap match, or seen Bobby Lashley tagged with someone that would make a little bit more sense. Like, um, I can't really think of anybody that would make sense. John Cena doesn't make sense to me, but no, and no one else does right now. Um, no one else pops in my mind right now for someone who would make sense. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's someone who would fit in that situation. Um, but yeah, this is kind of one of those matches, kind of like the Cena Triple H match at. Greatest Royal Rumble, where it was kind of like, okay, you kind of see which way this is already going. Whatever. Um, And I, I, it's the same situation with this. I just... I don't see a reason for this match to be here. And it's kind of a stupid, pointless match. Um, It's probably not going to end the Lashley-Owens-Elias feud thing going on. Whatever. Men's singles match. The winner is the new number one contender for the WWE Championship. Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. I've gone with Daniel Bryan. I think after the first two matches in this feud, and the second one shouldn't have even happened. It should have just been Daniel versus The Miz again. Um, I don't think it should have been a mixed tag match. That was kind of a, <coughs> that was kind of a pointless match. Um, I think Daniel should finally win this. Unless they are actually going with the thing for Royal Rumble, which could possibly be happening. But I think Daniel Bryan winning this would kind of be a nice you know, inspiring moment. Again, like I said, they could do the thing where Miz gets the championship and Daniel and him face at WrestleMania for WWE Championship after Daniel wins the Royal Rumble. Because the running rumor is that they are going for a repeat winner, which means someone who has already won the Royal Rumble. Um, A lot of the odds currently for that are actually The Rock and Daniel Bryan. Um, Hopefully it's not The Rock, if they're really going to shoehorn Roman versus The Rock to us somehow, I really don't want it to be taking the Royal Rumble win. Um, 
I don't like The Rock coming back. For those of you who don't, who do, I'm sorry, but I just personally don't. I think it takes away a spot from someone else on the greatest show or the the grandest stage of them all, and it's just kind of pointless to have part timers coming back like that. Um, there's no point to it. Which I mean, it's cool. It'd be cool to see Roman versus The Rock at WrestleMania. It would one, I don't want to see it for the championship. Two, I don't want to see The Rock win the Royal Rumble and take it from someone who deserves it more, like Daniel Bryan. Or, like, literally anybody else on the goddamn roster who's not Braun Strowman. Yes, my disdain for Braun Strowman is still very much there. Deal with it. Six-man tag match. The Shield versus Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre. You guys already know who I'm predicting. It's The Shield. Even with what's happened the past two weeks on Raw where it kind of seems like Daniel or like Dean might turn, it's not going to happen. Let, let's be honest. They wouldn't have brought him back and then so shortly after fucking break them back up. If they do, WWE is fucking stupid. I'm just going to say that right now. If they decide to break the shield up again and have the, have someone turn their backs again and have it be this shortly after they got back together, WWE has made a big, big mistake. I'm just going to say that right now. It also seems like maybe Dolph could be turning. Um, I actually saw this on Raw when I was watching it. The moment where uh, Braun's like, we don't need any weak links, and looks right at Dolph, and then Dolph looks to Drew, and then Drew just walks away. He did help Drew win the match later on, and then they beat down Seth Rollins. But you saw it. You kind of saw, like, okay, could he be the one who turns on Saturday? It'd be kind of a cool moment. You, Everyone's expecting Dean to turn on the shield, and then Dolph just super kicks Braun or some shit. Oh, I, I want it to happen so fucking bad. <laughs> I want to see Dolph take a super... Er, I want to see Braun take a super kick so much right now. And then a shield triple powerbomb right after. Um, And maybe even fuck. Even maybe a Claymore kick. Because Braun's trying to act like he's the leader. And he's not. He's very much not the leader of that group. Dolph and Drew are the two bigger parties in that group. And I'm going to say this right now. I love how Braun talks about weak links. Like, dude, the only championships you have in the WWE are the greatest Royal Rumble championship, which isn't even acknowledged and has literally not been on TV since the night after you won it, and a fucking tag team championship with a 10-year-old, which you immediately relinquish the next night. You're talking down saying weakest links to the two people who are cur the current Raw tag team champions, a former, two former Intercontinental Champions, a former United States World and WWE Champion, the former NXT Champion, and if you want to even go further than that with Drew, a former IWGP and a shit ton of indie championships. Braun, you have literally done nothing in your career and you are crap on the mic. Shut up. You, sir, are the wink link, not them. Just realize, just realize if you guys are rooting for Braun to do anything, shut up. He's a bitch. Deal with it. He's boring. Deal with it. He is literally Brock Lesnar. He is li literally, to me, that's who he is. He is Brock fucking Lesnar. I guarantee goddamn to you it's going to be the same boring bullshit we got with Brock if Braun was the championship. Continuing, because I don't want to fucking touch on that point anymore, because I swear to God, I can go on a tangent all day about how much I hate Braun Strowman. Six-woman tag team match. Ronda Rousey and the Bella Twins, for some reason, versus the Riot Squad. Rousey and the Bellas. Should it be the Riot Squad? Yes. Is it going to be? No. Should the Bellas be with Ronda? No. It should be someone like Ember Moon and Natalia, which would make more fucking sense. But no! The Bellas got their the Bellas got their private dressing room, locker room thing or attacked by the Riot Squad, so you know they're gonna attack with the fuck. Who the fuck how pretentious do you have to be to have your own goddamn private fucking locker room? Next, the Cruiserweight Championship match. Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy. Cedric Alexander. I would love for Buddy Murphy to win this because I really do like Buddy Murphy. He's fantastic. Um, but sadly, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Cedric's going to win. Like I said, uh, it's much like the Greatest Royal Rumble where no titles actually changed hands. Um, technically, if you want to go back to that, the only titles that did change hands were the Raw Tag Team Championships because they were vacant, but... That doesn't really count. WWE Championship match. AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Styles. Um, 
haven't given it to, to Joe yet, and they're giving him the Shinsuke treatment, which is what I really hate. I really fucking hate that they're doing the same bullshit they did to Shinsuke. That they're doing, or the same bullshit they did to Shinsuke, they're doing to Samoa Joe. Because they're both fan-fucking-tastic in the ring, they're both fantastic on the mic, Shinsuke a little bit less than Joe. And they're giving them the shittiest of fucking situations. If this ends with Samoa Joe low-blowing AJ Styles... It doesn't matter because AJ is, or Samojo's already a heel. He's already a fucking monster heel right now. It's gonna literally, it's gonna literally amount to nothing, and I, I feel bad for that. I think Samojo is gonna lose this match, and it sucks. Or AJ Styles is gonna win by DQ. Oh wait, no, like he can't do that. He can't win by DQ or countout because it's a no DQ, no countout thing. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea where this one's gonna go. This feud has been, this feud's been fucking everywhere. Like, I'm not even kidding. It's much like the Shinsuke feud, where every time you thought Shinsuke was going to win again, and then... So I'm I'm not going for Samoa Joe, and I feel bad for that, because I really want Samoa Joe to win. So back to the Tag Team Championship match, the New Day versus Cesaro and Sheamus. D-Bar. Yeah, I'm going for Cesaro and Sheamus. I don't think New Day are going to... I don't want New Day to keep the titles. I, I, it's not that I hate New Day. I love New Day. They're funny on the mic, but they're stupid gimmick just holds them back for me. It makes them less enjoyable. They do some funny shit, I won't deny. The pancakes, the bootios, all that stuff is just meh. So yeah, I want the bar to win. Women's tag team match, Asuka and Naomi versus the Iconics. Asuka and Naomi. I, I, I really, I mean, I get that they're gonna be in Australia, but still there's no way they're gonna have the Iconics win over Asuka and Naomi. This is another match that I think could really be done without. We'd it's kind of like, okay, do we really need this? Like, this match is kind of just an out there one. It's like, okay, is there a reason we have this? Although, they could do a huge swerve, and because we are in Australia, Buddy Murphy and the Iconics could both get victories here. Um, which, I wouldn't be upset about Buddy Murphy being the champion. I'm not going to say I would be. I, I'd actually, it'd be very fun to see. Um, but the Iconics winning is kind of like, eh, I don't really care. And finally, SmackDown Women's Championship match, Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch. Come on, y'all already know how I'm taking Becky Lynch, obviously. I would never, ever, ever take Charlotte over Becky. I have literally not taken Charlotte over Becky in any of the matches in their feud so far. In the Triple Threat match, I had Becky. In the match they had at the next pay-per-view, I had Becky. In the rematch, in Charlotte's rematch... Wait, did she have a rematch already? No, no, she didn't. Never mind. Um... In this match, I have Becky. In any match that comes after this, I will have Becky. Because I don't think Charlotte deserves to be champion. Just so sue me. She's fantastic in the ring. She's pretty good on the mic. But she's boring as fuck as a face. She needs to be... She should have been the one to turn heel. I'm not going to I'm not gonna go into this again. But she should have been the one to turn heel. Becky should have stayed face. But whatever. Um, but yeah. Hopefully, this will be a good show. Hopefully, Super Showdown will actually be kind of enjoyable. Um... Who knows? I'll probably be getting shit-faced during it. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay golden. Peace.